everyone. This is me, JD. I talked about this yesterday about doing a uh, soup and biscuits uh, episode for you guys. So that's what I'm doing. I'm letting you in on my snow day ritual. And please remember that I am not a cook. I'm not a chef, nor am I a nutritionist, but this is going to be on the healthy side of things. And I'm going to um, apologize for the bad connection right now because our power has been in and out. So here's hoping that this will go smoothly. And while the biscuits are baking, I'm going to also show you my quickie, quickie soup um, and like all the tricks and fun stuff. So first thing you want to do is preset your oven for 450 degrees. And hopefully by the time that is done, biscuits will be ready. And I actually, like most of you, am on a time crunch because I totally forgot at 6.30 I have a reading to do. So <clears throat> we are cutting this off at 6.30 um, whether I'm done or not. <laughs> All right, so first um, I want to get my parchment paper because this will save you Using parchment paper is going to save you from the mess afterwards. And so I see that I have some friends already. I don't know if we're down to one or not, but if we are, welcome. Nice to see you. And yes, I am a little fussy with this kind of uh, cooking stuff. So we're going to put this parchment paper upside down so it doesn't keep rolling. And I'm going to use pretty much anything I have. Here, I realize you guys are not seeing everything here, but we've got the flour. We've got the light cream. Now the recipe that I use, and I got it off the internet, it calls for heavy cream or whipping cream. I just use light cream. And I also subbed out the regular all-purpose flour for the organic whole wheat flour. Um, so that's my substitute. I also um, put a little butter on top. Now this is frozen, so hopefully this will thaw out a little bit. But I like to put it on the biscuits, like, right um, before they go in. And this way it melts into the biscuits. Oh my gosh, it's so good. All right. So the other thing we need is salt and baking soda. Now I know I have, ah, here we go. I'm looking in my cabinet. I'm like, I know I have both of these things. Oh, not baking soda, baking powder. What am I thinking? Just plain old baking powder, nothing special. I do like that it says non-GMO. I am a big fan of that. And I also have this ginormous thing of Himalayan sea salt that we're going to use if I can reach it. Short people troubles. Ha ha. Salt. Zero, me one. Big old pink sea salt. Great for cooking. Also great for spiritual cleansing. And I've used it for both. So maybe these will be cleansing biscuits as well. No, not really. Don't, don't, don't use biscuits for cleansing. Well, you could if you baked rosemary and sage into them, which would also be delicious. <laughs> and the sea salt, yeah, it is actually kind of cleansing. Probably not in the way that you were anticipating. Now, most responsible adults know where all of their measuring cups are. I, however, am not most responsible adults, so we're going to be using half cup instead of whole cup measuring because I don't know where it is. But, you know, again, this is real world problems. This is certainly not a cooking show. Hi, cookery and crafts. I hope I don't disappoint you with, <laughs> with this cooking because let me tell you, it's going to be a little bit of an adventure. And... As many times as I've made this, I am not one for memorization. So this is actually one of the few recipes I ever follow. I am doing well. Hello. Hello, everyone. Cookery and crafts and abacus, and I lost the name down there. Wow, we have so many people. That is awesome. This is, this is the actual recipe. You can 
freeze and do a screenshot of that. Um, I got this off the internet, so this is, but it has my own little tweaks to it. Like I said, with the whole grain organic um, whole wheat flour um, and the light cream instead of the heavy cream, I like making out those swaps. Um, and so, all right, so the first thing we're going to want is one and three quarter cups of all purpose flour. Now I actually already have some open, so we're gonna use that first. And I do store mine in the fridge because um, about oh six months ago, I found out that we had some little critters in my complex. Hello. So this is just kind of what I did with my leftovers. So we're gonna start there first. And I'm actually gonna go over the recipe a little bit only because I want to make extra so that that my doggy has a little extra so we're gonna put extra flour in we're gonna put a little extra of everything um, and I'm not gonna be super exact on it so I'm actually gonna put about two cups and then I'm gonna put the full two cups of the um, well not two full cups probably a cup and a half of the whipping cream We'll see what the texture looks like. Okay. Right now, this is a half cup measure. All right, and again, I already told you guys I'm not being super precise because I want to make extra for the doggy. And I'm not going to go do the math because it's biscuits, it's kind of like pasta. Kind of hard to screw up. Oh, it is a little ASMR, yes it is. Okay, so right now there's about a cup um, in here and we want just about a, a little over. Because again, I'm trying to make more, more for the doggy. He doesn't know he's getting a surprise at the end of this. But, you know, if you're going to make biscuits, you might as well make some for the dog, too. Hello, everyone. Wow. Okay. Okay, and... Okay, so I'm not going to do the full three cu uh, the full two cups. We're going to stop it right about there. Hopefully... This will fit back in that nice little plastic bag, and then I'll have enough for when I want to make biscuits on the next snowy day, which hopefully won't be for a while since this is March already. Yeah, we are getting some AMSR sounds in here. ASMR, yes. Ooh, nice. Not really my intention, but we'll go for it. Now, my mother will usually just keep her flour in a Tupperware. Oh, the bag broke. That's good. So you know what? We'll double bag it. Bag it from one end, bag it from the other. If I had bigger bags, we would use that too. So the soup shouldn't take too long at all. Like I said, the soup will probably take me as long as it takes for these to bake. Oh my gosh, I love how all of you are on here. And thanks for putting up with my uh, klutziness. You're getting... Oh, yeah, this bag doesn't work. Phew, well, that's a crappy bag. Oh, and these bags are wet. That's delightful. Maybe if I take from the back... Yeah, we'll let those dry out a little. So we are double bagging the flour. And this is really just so that it stays fresh because I'm leaving, I'm still leaving it in the original package. And you don't want to keep your flour and stuff for too long because believe it or not, it can actually get moldy. Same thing for pancake mixes, so you don't want to keep them forever. Okay, step two. Ooh, cabbage soup. Nice twin video. 
Okay, so now we're gonna do two and a half teaspoons, not table, don't mix that up. And again, I'm gonna go a little bit over this. Now this is something I got from, oh, from Pampered Chef, I love this. It's a little sliding um, measuring spoon. So we're doing two and, a, uh, two and a half teaspoons. Always double check. It's th that, you know, measure, or measure twice, cut once mentality. Ah, two and a half teaspoons. Look, they have a marker right there for it. So that's perfect. So you only have to measure once. And I don't know if you knew what this is for, but it's for leveling your baking soda. See how you just scrape it? There's some more AMSR for you. A yeah, I can never say it right. And then dump it, and I'm gonna put just a little pinch more because we went over on the flour. Oh, thank you. Well, it would be nice if I could find my my actual cup cup. All right, so now um, we do a little bit of salt. This is a half table, uh, no, not a half tablespoon. Again, don't mess that up, half a teaspoon. And I'm just gonna wipe this out because I don't necessarily want baking soda in my stuff. Okay. So we're gonna go half, and this I'm not gonna put any more than half on. Ooh, it only gives me one teaspoon. So we're gonna have to eyeball it. And this is something I'd rather go under than over. So there you go. And then we're almost done in terms of adding the ingredients. Then it's just the milk. And this is where it's gonna get messy. And it's gonna get goopy and gross, but it's all worth it. And we're going to use a wine glass to measure out the biscuits. This should make between seven to eight biscuits. So now it says we're going to do one and a quarter cups of heavy cream, but I'm switching it out for light cream. Um, okay, so we're going to mix it all together. And what we're doing is we're going to mix it just enough so that it forms a ball. Now, this is a pint. For those who don't know, a pint is two cups. Aw, thank you. Might as well live stream, because you know what? Then people can see what it's really like to cook. <laughs> you know, you get these... I do love the beautiful videos where you see everything kind of cooked down very quickly. But one, I'm not that technologically savvy. And two, I'm not going to edit. I'm kind of lazy. And you're going to see by my cooking later the soup, I am a little lazy with that. So I am going to measure this a little bit, and then the last bit we're going to manually. So you should use a liquid cup measure, but it's, it's kind of the same. So the last quarter I'm going to add manually. So you lightly stir. Until it forms a ball. You don't want to overwork this recipe. Because then the biscuits get tough. So we are going to need more. But you can see it getting sticky. Oh, that's good! I hope you do cookery and crafts. You know, I find live streaming, it connects you better to your, to your people. Like, I get to talk to you in a way now that I really couldn't if it was just pre-recorded. Okay, so we're going to add more. Because it is not sticky enough. It's not 
forming enough of a ball. It's still too powdery. Like if you look, this is still... Again, we don't want to overwork. I'm going to add a little more down there. And remember, I'm going to put more than one and a quarter cups because I have that extra flour in there. And actually, I should have left my flour out. That was a dumb move, and I'm going to regret that in a minute. Well, maybe not, because I'm going to have some extra flour inside this. And I'm not mixing so much as I'm kneading and folding. And it's saying... Uh, place on a lightly floured surface. Yeah, so I'm going to... I'm going to be smart and take out some of that extra flour. Nope. That apparently is not going to work. I was not smart enough. Here, we're going to leave that for a second. I'm going to leave you guys while I go mess up my fridge and my kitchen to go get that extra flour. Again, rookie move. I've made this enough times that I should know better, but see, I'm trying to clean up as I go, and I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to double bag, and it's going to be great, but then I forgot to flour the surface. So now I have the flour. And I feel like this is still a little crumbly. I feel like it could still use a little more cream. Because I'd rather my biscuits on the moister side. And again, you're folding because that folding is going to get layers in there. All right. This is starting to feel right. See how that's a nice bowl? Alright, we're going to set that aside for a minute. And get rid of all that junk. Okay. So my nice, nice neatly packaged flour is going to come undone for a moment. Again, this is real-time cooking. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to do fun stuff that you didn't mean to do. But the good thing is that the soup is super fast. And you're also going to want to flour the glass that you're using to cut the, um, the biscuit shape out in. Okay, so we're just going to spread that around, and you want to lightly flour that glass, because otherwise it's going to stick, and it's going to stick anyway. So we're going to knead it a little more on there to get some more folds in. Now you can also add herbs to this. My mother um, always made a great herbed um, biscuit recipe. That's something maybe I'll have her when I'm visiting. We'll record an episode of that. And you fold about 10 times now I've already been folding as I've been mixing, and again, this is what creates those layers. So when you look at those Pillsbury dough biscuits, and they're all those flaky layers, this is how you get that. But you're not kneading, because if you knead it, it becomes tough. And I will say the whole wheat, it's going to be tough anyway. All right. Now we're going to spread this out a little bit just by pressing it down. Now 
I'm going to press it a little more on the other side. Now I will say I'm not known for having even biscuits, but that's great. When I want a smaller biscuit, I'll make a small, I'll eat one of the smaller ones. All right, so you can kind of see that's about the thickness. And you can use any glass. This happens to be one of my smaller ones. And again, this is going to make about six to eight. And then I'm going to make a little one with the leftovers for the doggy. And there's no ingredients in here that he can't have, but with the dogs, you do want to go light on the salt. So you can see, and you put them on an unbaked, an ungreased baking sheet. Yes. I, I've seen some people do live streams uh, for like five or six hours, which I think I, you know, I wouldn't do because I, it turns a lot of people off. I know it turns me off. Okay, so we're going to fold this again. But yeah, any cooking project, and this is why I'm doing the soup at the same time, so it's not dead air while the biscuits are cooking. You're going to see the soup too, and that should take me less than a half hour, which is good because... I have that reading coming up soon. Uh, yeah, I'm only going to get about two more biscuits and then the dog's biscuit. Oh, it's going to be nice and thick. That'll be, and you can see the layers already. And again, if you want to use the regular flour, uh, the regular all-purpose flour, they do have organic versions of that, and the biscuit will come out a heck of a lot lighter um, mouthfeel-wise. These are a little bit chewier, a little tougher. I'm okay with that. Okay, so we're going to make some little doggy treats. Look, little doggy biscuits. Isn't that cute? You know, I could actually get one more biscuit for myself out of this. I'm going to make him four. Because when mommy eats, he likes to eat too. Actually, there's enough here. Here, let's see. I'll make another biscuit for myself. And whatever's left over will make some more biscuits for the dog. All right. And again, we just fold. Oh, my dog is going to be so happy. Oh, and this is good. I got seven people biscuits out of this. And we're going to get quite a few little doggy biscuits. And he won't care if they get tough. In fact, he'll probably like that. I don't like to give him a lot of yeasty products because he is prone to um, candida. Oh, don't be afraid. I, I have to say, I love live streaming. I, I love it. And I wouldn't give him any more than one of these a day. Because it, you know, again, he is prone to candida, so I don't want to give him... You could even mix peanut butter into this, and they would... They would love that. Doggies love peanut butter. Be careful of any other nut butters and make sure you consult a vet. And you know what? This will be a little... One more little small biscuit for me. So look at, look at that. We could have gotten eight biscuits out of this recipe. So now... We're going to roll you guys over to the baking. Aha! Oh, you can see the dog bed. And then I'm just going to place these little ones on the extra space. Okay, and then we're going to cut up, 
and actually we can clean this a little bit. And this is the parchment, beauty of the parchment paper is that there is no mess on my counter. Look at that. No mess. Just the bags I need to throw out. But mess is cleaned and I have some cream for my coffee or my tea later. Oh, parchment is the best. Because it saves you on cleaning time. And I'm going to tell you this soup, you might end up being a little disappointed because it is almost too easy and I use way too many cheats. But I don't apologize for it. Okay, so we're going to set the timer, which is really just my brain. And you're, we're going to cook it for 10 to 12 minutes. Ooh, but I want to put a little bit of butter on each of them. Except for the doggies. We're not going to put butter on the doggies ones. Because doggies should not have butter. And again, this butter was frozen, so... I don't take the time to defrost. on a pretty little plate. Again, most grown-ups have butter dishes. I do not. I don't use enough butter and often enough to actually have a butter dish. Makes no sense. Now I will say my parents like using the Kerry Gold butter because um, it's grass-fed, which if I had my druthers, I would, but this is the Acme Organic. And I just take a little pat, put it on top, and it'll melt right into and on top of the biscuit. It'll bake right in. You may still want more butter. Now, some people will fold butter right into the recipe, which is fine, too. And you could also have fun with this by folding shredded cheese in there. You could fold, um, like I said, herbs. And that's it. Oh, yay, we're subbing each other. How fun. Okay, so in these go 10 minutes. And I got about 25 before I have to go do my reading. So it is 6.03, so it's 6.13, we're going to want to check. I'm going to relocate you guys. Actually, first I need to unplug, because otherwise you're not going anywhere. Okay, we're going to move. The doggy bed. Okay. Sorry, trying to give you guys a good angle. And even though we didn't handle eggs or anything, wash your hands anyway. Although this is going to be so easy, you're going to you're going to go JD, that's way too many cheats. I can't do that. And you don't have to, but I'm showing you an easy way to get a wholesome, fairly healthy soup. And I have to go fairly low sodium, so almost all of this is low sodium. Okay, I'm getting out all the ingredients. This way I don't have to keep running to and from fridge, freezer, all that fun stuff. And I'm going, to I'm going to show you the ingredients as I go. And 
there's a lot of frozen stuff going in there. Almost everything. Oh, one more. So, there's like a million ingredients. We're not going to use nearly as many. This is not bad. We're 30 minutes in. Seven more minutes for the biscuits. I am going to put this on high. Now, I'm using stainless steel cookware. You do want to get it kind of warm and hot first before adding all the ingredients. I don't measure, but I just put some olive oil. Now there's been a lot of hubbub about olive oils being adulterated and not pure. Um, this is one my dad has done a lot of research. And this one is cold pressed, extra virgin. It's California made. Um, I love it. I even put it in my dog's food sometimes. Now here is cheat number one. Now, some people will say this is too expensive, but I say if I go out and buy a cup of soup at a restaurant, I'm paying like four bucks for one cup. This is going to make at least ten cups of soup. Mirepoix, it's your best friend. Onion, celery, carrot. And yes, you can chop all this up. If you want to do that, you go ahead. Personally, I'm not doing that. So... You can, you can shame me all you want for convenience cooking, but in here it's nice and hot. And for stainless steel cookware, that's good. Ugh, already smells like Thanksgiving in there. And you're just going to let this clarify a little, and you can recycle or reuse. Now, whoops, saute it so it doesn't stick. You want all that nice olive oil to get on everything. I'm having to cook left-handed. That's fun. And if it sticks, once you add the water, it's going to... I am going to lower it a little. It's a little too hot. But olive oil, carrots, onion, celery are the base of pretty much every main soup you're going to find. Unless it's a cream base. Alright. So. First thing, we're going to do a little black pepper. I like this because it's mixed. Bye. I don't measure anything. We're going to add for a little bit of liquid and a little salt flavoring, coconut aminos. This is a nice soy sauce substitute that is very low sodium. And it has, you know, just, it's, it's a natural product. I get it at Whole Food. It is kind of pricey but a little goes a long way. And when you flavor the initial ingredients, everything else in the soup tastes nice. And again, because I have to go low sodium, um, I like to kind of stick with products that help that. Now, I do put in a little bit, um, a little bit of ginger. It kind of warms up the soup. So I do ground ginger. Now, if I had more time, I would do fresh garlic, but I don't, so we're using garlic powder. I'm Italian, so I go heavy-handed on the garlic. I don't shy away from good garlic. But they now have garlic paste in tubes, so you can always get that. But I don't mind garlic powder. Now, this is not something that I would share with dogs, because for those of you who don't know, 
Onion and garlic are toxic to dogs, so don't give don't give your dog any. This is my go-to seasoning. Trader Joy Trader Joe's 21 seasoning salute. I use this for everything. It has literally 21 herbs and spices. I feel like a Kentucky Fried Chicken commercial. And as you see, because I'm running out, I already have a full one on hand because I literally go through it that quickly. Now, here we go into more cheats. And you're gonna go, wait, but it's, it's pre-cut and it's pre-done. I can't do that. I'm a good cook. Guess what? A lot of these frozen fruits and vegetables are a heck of a lot fresher than whatever you're buying fresh in the produce. And because I don't get to cook often because I work too much, this is a great option. Now, at this point, I am going to add a little bit of salt. And I have somewhere, I have a salt grinder. Ooh, as I knock everything out. Again, friends, you're seeing this real time. You're seeing cooking, warts and all. No, there's no warts going on here, but you get the idea. Where did I put, I guess I am going to use my big salt. I do have a little salt grinder. Something that you may not know is with every ingredient you add, you want to add a little bit of salt. Ooh, it's almost time for the biscuits. Now we're not done with the spices yet. Now something else that I really love to add is frozen pre-cut rutabaga. Rutabaga is a great natural, I believe, antifungal. So if you suffer from candida, this is a great addition to add to your diet. I put about a cup in, makes the soup a little bit warmer, a little richer. The other thing that I got from Trader Joe's was um, frozen leeks. And those are really wonderful to add to your soup. Again, we're gonna... Now at this point, it does not look like a soup. Oh, time to check the biscuits. All right, you're gonna move. Ooh, biscuits look done. All right. Oh, this is not gonna work. Logistics, friends, logistics, sorry. You're gonna see some weird angles. Look at how puffy those are. I'm going to turn off the stove. And I have 15 minutes left to cook with you guys. So there are the biscuits. Per look, at, look at that. Perfect. And perfect little doggy biscuits. Oh, he's going to love those. Okay, so back to the soup. Now we don't want anything to burn, so this is where I add Apollo. Shh, I don't add Apollo. This is where I add the broth. Now one thing that I do do, and I don't have any more because I've used it all, when I cook meat or when I make my now, for those who don't know, I have a cooking blog called Fat Girl Cooking Thin. And I make this incredible zucchini pizza casserole. And I take all of the drippings from that and I save it because you get all of the vegetable drippings, the spices, the herbs, and then I freeze it. Now, I'm also going to fill this up again. This is about four cups. I'm going to fill it with water.
And not only does that get out all the other broth that's still in there, but this is going to um, give your soup more water, more liquid. And believe it or not, we're almost done. And while I'm doing my reading, this is going to simmer nicely. Thank you for all who've stuck with me here. Now, something else that we're going to add, we added the pepper. I'm gonna add in a little red pepper or cayenne, maybe. Ah, there we go. Again, the ginger, the red pepper, um, we're gonna add a little paprika. So you notice I use a lot of organic whenever possible. These are glass jars whenever possible. You know, and it's not always possible. It is expensive, but luckily with organic spices, I'm going to add a little more of the 21 seasonings. Oh, whoops. Yep, salute. Now, the other thing I like to add is turmeric, and turmeric and black pepper help reduce inflammation. Gives the soup a nice color. We're actually done with our spices. I am going to add a little more salt. So I figure about three pinches of salt. You can always salt it later. Okay, so now we're going to do some petite diced red uh, tomatoes. Well, it's the only kind they sell is red. I've never seen green tomatoes on sale. And again, because I want a little bit more of a tomatoey soup. And you can rinse this out and add that water back in there. Because remember, um, and I'm going to rinse that out for recycling. So the other thing we're going to add is some garbanzo beans. are just hearing me open the can and yes I have an electric can opener however it is buried by all the baking stuff right now and I always rinse my beans because again I, I don't want the salt that's in it Rinse them right in the can. We're going to dump those in. This is going to be nice and that's going to add protein and fiber. And for something, for people who don't know, you have tomato paste in a tube. Tomato paste acts as a natural MSG. And for those who don't know, MSG basically just brings out the flavor that's already in food. That's why so many um, Chinese restaurants use it. Now, I don't like, I don't use MSG personally, mm -hmm. but tomato paste is a natural one. And look at that nice red color. Oh, I got 10, well, five more minutes. So we're gonna add another pre-cut veggie. 
the other thing that I'll call this is my kitchen sink soup. It's kind of whatever veggies I have in the house. But again, organic, garden blend. I'm not going to add too much. Just about a cup more. You get some corn and it actually has soybeans in it. So you may not want to use this if you um, if you can't have soy. Um, then you want to stay away from this blend. And then believe it or not, we are on our last ingredient for this soup. I know, there's like a million ingredients. I was going to put two cans of the diced tomatoes, but I don't think it needs it. I mean, that has a good color to it already. The last little bit is Bob's Red Mill Veggie Soup Mix. And all this has in it is... Where is it? Split Green split peas, yellow split peas, barley, lentils, and then vegetable pasta. And the vegetable pasta is made with like spinach uh, and tomato powder. And it has some paprika powder, um, niacin, folic acid. Uh, Bob's Red Mill is a, is a very good brand. It's one of the brands I trust. And one serving of this is a quarter cup, but this is going into the whole soup. Oh, thank you, Twin Videos. So we're going to, I'm just going to pour it right in. I'm going to eyeball about mm, three quarters of a cup. I don't need any more than that. And that's going to soak up some of I like my soup a little bit closer to a stew. Some people like brothy, brothy soups. I do not. I mean, but this is going to be hearty, and it's going to feed me for the better part of a week. And really, we, I didn't use an entire bag of any of the frozen veggies. So you're looking at a can of those diced tomatoes um, because they're organic, is about 150, 175. The mirepoix, which was pre-cut up, not organic, which it was, was about five dollars. So we're up to six. The um, Acme brand of organic chicken broth is only two dollars, which is not bad for organic. So now we're up to seven, eight. Um, the garbanzo beans were like 80 cents, so we'll round it up to nine. Um, uh, let's see. And then with all the little bits of everything else, figure about $12 total for the soup. But then when you figure that this is going to serve you at least, I'm going to say this is at least six servings, you're looking at only $2 per serving. That's really no more, and most of it's organic. You know all of the ingredients. Um, now, I have canned soup, but I'll tell you, it's so salty that it makes my, my, um, it makes me like swell. I retain water like crazy. So for me, I can look at this and I go, okay, I know all of the ingredients that were put in it. It's nice and high in protein because of the beans, the peas, the lentils. Um, it's going to have a good flavor because of all the herbs and spices. And you don't need to worry about natural flavorings. I'm, I know I'm doing air quotes again. Um, because you know what the natural flavoring is. And this, oh, and then one last thing I always forget, you want to put a bay leaf in. Bay leaf adds a really nice um, flavor to any soup. And it's funny, um, I, so I just keep them in here. We're going to put in one. We'll put in two another small one and we're just going to let that simmer covered for the next 30 minutes 40 minutes and it should be all beautiful by the time i'm done so that my friends is my quick soup and biscuits and look this was all done in under an hour and frankly this only took longer because i had sticks of dealing with the camera 
So I just want to thank all of you for being here with me. I actually have to run because I'm going to do a psychic reading in about five minutes. Um, but I mean, there we go. Soup and biscuits all done. And frankly, once this comes to a boil, you could have it right then and there. Um, but I'm going to let it just simmer so that all the flavors kind of meld together. And again, play around with your soups. Have fun with it. But there's no reason to say, oh, I can't cook a healthy meal because I don't have time. If you have an hour, and f some of you put this in a crock pot. You don't need, but this cooks right away. Those of you who have an Instapot, this would be done in like 30 minutes. Um, and you could make smaller batches. I make a big batch because I want to have some for the week. And I may even freeze about three cups of it and use it as a starter for my next soup. Um, which I did for my last soup and I'll tell you it adds all sorts of beautiful flavor that to whatever your next soup is going to be um, It's going to be uh, a beautiful rounded nice flavor um, So anyway, oh your cabbage soup is ready too. how perfect well enjoy it on this snowy day If it's not snowy for you, then just enjoy it anyway um, Anyway, thank you all for joining me. I'll see you later for card of the day. Bye